our session. We will try to stick to our schedule. We have quite a few presenters. We need to give each one of them a chance to speak up. Uh, housing in a modern city, what it's like, what can it be like, what could it be like, and what kind of choice do modern urban residents make? And we are going to discuss it with our guests this afternoon. Our topic is um, housing for people and the development of cities. What do new uh, blocks and quarters give us? How does society change with the uh, change of the type of uh, residential uh, development? I'm going to introduce uh, our speakers as we go along. And uh, to begin with, I set the tone for our discussion. Let me give the floor to Alexander Leonidovich and please tell us how you see the development of uh, our uh, residential quarters. It's about 17 key agglomerations with uh, about 50 million uh, residents and f generating 38 percent of our country's uh, GDP. How should the cities change? What should be the focus of those changes and how housing uh, influences the changing in the city? Thank you for the opportunity to uh, present my uh, thoughts on this uh, topic. And my uh, colleagues and I at Strelka devoted last uh, 10 years to that topic voluntarily. I, s I think that the city is the main format for the life of the city in the future. And this future is uh, quite near. 75% of uh, the population is urbanized living in the city. 70% of uh, the territory of the uh, cities is, is covered by housing. And we need to rethink its new mission, its new purpose and meaning. And at the same time, we uh, want to improve and optimize uh, conditions for living. And al also, uh, we're talking about agglomerations, a process that goes on continuously all over the world. You may agree or disagree with this topic or this trend, but it's global. It's going to be the um, nature of uh, urbanistic uh, processes in the future. And you need to have a plan and to s see clearly and uh, not to lose uh, the core. And the main core here is happiness of people. 120 million square meters is a number that is often quoted. And it's quite optimistic. And it means that a lot of new housing will be built. But I think that the success of this event will be measured by happy human lives. If we have 5 million families that will have their own housing, but how many of them will be happy? We want all of them to be happy. And what can we do to achieve that? That's the uh, topic that I would like to suggest that we discuss. To even start discussing it, I think you need to give it some thought and you need to discuss it for a long time with the right highly qualified individuals. And also you need to spend time designing and planning. And I always want to implement this uh, proverb here in Russia that you need to uh, measure seven times and then you cut only once. And the construction usually begins uh, and sometimes it wasn't really planned well. And we, need, we have lots of th things to think about. For example, we build a residential building and it's to be used for uh, 50 or 70 years. We need to think until 2070, uh, 2090. But that's how long those uh, buildings will stand. And do we know what kind of life we're going to have in 2030 and 2040? when the use of these residential buildings will be in full scale. They will 
finish remodeling, they will have furniture, they, those families will have children, but will their life be happy? That's the most important question. Life will be different, of course. We are living in the post-industrial era when, and um, as Mr. Sabanin mentioned yesterday, like in Moscow, there are no uh, major industrial sites, but there are residential areas. If you imagine a city as uh, a flat or an apartment, you have a, your bedroom where people sleep and also locations or studies where people work. And what we, we have zeal and we have uh, used to be a big uh, uh, automotive manufacturer and all these uh, uh, people who live in the uh, residential buildings around, where do they work? Where do they go? Uh, do they need any transportation or not? Do they need any transport or can they uh, live or work where they live? Uh, do they need to travel to the other end of the city? And what will the economics of a city consist of, not just Moscow, how it's going to be organized? Uh, what kind of companies and industrial enterprises will be hiring or building offices or will that there not be offices? or will they be using some other schedule where the people will find it convenient to live in the city? That's one question. And each uh, city, in that sense, has no uh, holistic plan or comprehensive plan. When you come to a hotel, there's usually the evacuation plan. What happens in case of fire if you are on the third floor, on the ninth floor, and that's your individual plan for saving your life. There are individual plans like that. The same with city development. And the same with the development of housing in each city. OK, what's going to happen to this city later for you to understand where to build what kind of uh, buildings? And I think that many questions, they have to do with the quality of urban life, where you build your housing. For example, you are 20 years old, you are looking for your future, you, uh, will you choose a big flat in a small city or a small flat next to your university? And the answer is obvious. And in that sense, what should we be building? And then it's a matter of what we do there. How much time do we spend in, in that housing? Uh, are those buildings at the end of their life cycle? We have this carpet on the wall. We have these uh, cups and TV in the corner. And we have uh, our study, our kids room, or we'll in the same apartment. Or we'll be, be using public spaces. We'll be, will we be cooking at home in our kitchen? Or will we be using uh, restaurants and cafes? Uh, will be still cooking at home, or shall, or will we be ordering uh, delivery of our food, or, or what? Or perhaps we'll be just uh, spending the night at home. I have seen many flats in Europe which people use only to spend the night there. They leave for work early in the morning, and then they get back to spend the night there. And we already see uh, functions, and some functions are no longer performed inside the housing. They are performed in some public spaces. And everyone felt how comfortable it is in Moscow. And we could withstand all those tourists during the World Cup. And the city is quite good and noble and logical continuation of your own flat. I may have a small flat, but around my flat, I have this huge city of Moscow. So what? We don't fit into that flat, but the city, its size helps us. So the mission of a big city of the future or mid-sized uh, city of the future, that would be a city taking care of its uh, residents. It's a city that leaves no one behind. It gives you health care. It uh, helps you with your occupation, with your um, marriage, with your kids. And that's a city 
that stays in uh, contact with its residents. And that's how you look at your housing, at your flat, at your apartment, something natural to your habitat. And we need to keep thinking about that. We need to discuss that topic, and we need to design really carefully for a long, long time. I believe that our design is too uh, rush, and uh, it it uh, requires additional pre-feasibility studies, uh, anthropological studies, studies of culture, uh, learning new uh, skills that people might already have. You need to have more demographic studies, more precise prediction and futurology in a good sense of the word. As I conclude, I'd say that we need to be more careful as we design things. Uh, thank you, Alexander. And we can see what you're talking about in Moscow. Uh, Strelka and your team helps uh, change the city, and people spend uh, less time in their homes and more elsewhere. I'm a student of one of uh, your programs, and there was this uh, interesting lecture in the morning delivered by Maxim Oreshkin about the economic growth, and then we exchanged uh, uh, opinions. And of course, we enjoyed the part about spatial uh, development. Uh, you have a working group right now uh, headed by you, and uh, they are generating new solutions for the new models of economic growth, considering the contribution of the city, of the cities, big and small, different size. How do you see the main areas uh, of their development? Please uh, tell all of us here what you think about trends in uh, uh, urban economics will be changing faster, how it will influence the housing stock and how the ministry will uh, stimulate some industries in the city. Uh, good afternoon. If we look at where we live and how we live, at all times it was uh, decided by economics. When we have had agrarian uh, economy, uh, everything was spread out. Industrialization led to the formation of industrial type cities now in the post-industrial world. Cities are changing ag again, and especially cities that have industries that are actively growing in this post-industrial era. And uh, the cities are sometimes lagging behind, or in rare situations, they are ahead of their time. But in most cases, they are la lagging behind for the reason the other speaker mentioned, because decisions that we make today determine how the city will look like in 30 or 40 years. And of course, our main task is to make sure that the decisions we make today and the errors that we make as we make those decisions, and you cannot live without errors. We need to avoid any serious mistakes that we would have to change in uh, 10 or 20 years. I want be going too deep in the spatial development details. We discussed it quite a bit yesterday. And this topic uh, is what we hear all the time. But my last point that I'm going to mention, somebody mentioned happiness here. If we look at uh, more modern post-industrial economy, if we look at this factor of happiness, is happiness a factor of economic growth? And as we go from agrarian economy to post-industrial economy, the role of happiness of a specific individual uh, gains importance. And every individual has certain ideas, trying to implement those ideas, impacting the space around this person, and the impact on the economy grows. That's why as we develop urban environment, as we develop housing that brings happiness to human beings is the prerequisite for uh, fast economic growth, the establishment of new industries, new products, and new developments. Thank you. We work a lot with different schools and institutions. And uh, we have uh, Tatiana Blaker here, and uh, she represents a very 
uh, respectable institution that uh, studies uh, uh, different uh, housing policies in different uh, cities. Tatiana, we looked at uh, your latest uh, survey, and uh, we have some trends there. Uh, cities are expanding because it's hard to uh, develop without expanding the territory de facto, de jure, uh, the uh, new territories are uh, being developed by residents and you have higher buildings in certain areas which violates their uh, urban environment. What's your opinion? What kind of tools of uh, regulation should the government and federal government be using to uh, set up the joint uh, universal uh, rules for the development of cities, especially uh, residential housing, because that's where the core of our economics is. Oh, thank you. This year, thanks to uh, DOM.RF, we had a major study to assess uh, new indicators of uh, building and housing sphere of major Russian agglomerations. And this study has uh, shown us some new ideas and conclusions that we haven't even felt them intuitively. Most importantly, uh, that in the previous years, city planning uh, regulation was the tool of not economic uh, development, but rather of housing policy. And the goal there was to make housing affordable, and that task uh, has been successfully uh, met. And in all those agglomerations, uh, the level of affordability of uh, housing increased uh, manifold. And the main tool as we dealt with that was that uh, city planning policy, which was just uh, described by Alexander. And uh, let me tell you, from the beginning, Russian agglomerations going in the opposite direction compared with the uh, developed countries because we had this tendency to increase affordability of housing and uh, build more and more housing in foreign agglomeration agglomerations the trend is uh, reverse they are reducing their affordability and uh, the amount of uh, square meters they built we have five to ten times more new housing and if we measure it not in square meters but in living units. And that was the uh, result of the government policy which uh, uh, turned into the local city planning policy which was successfully implemented. Now we are discussing a totally new agenda. We need to improve the quality of city planning regulation, improving the quality of urban environment. And all that in any country is the opposite to uh, affordability and in any federal uh, document of any uh, country they usually say what's more important affordability or quality of uh, city planning regulation all countries went through the stage that Russia uh, just uh, passed and it's good that we started the discussion our research has shown that as long as uh, city planning documents do not reflect the priority to improve the quality of design and construction, and more than half of agglomerations that we studied, they keep expanding as they did in the past. They go greenfield in the suburbs, and, and still uh, their master plans uh, uh, are still like that, as they were in uh, 1935. And we also looked at the uh, density of uh, development, residential development, and there, we are talking about 900 uh, million square meters of residential building or 70 percent of GDP, uh, 68 trillion rubles. That's the potential volume of that new market of new type based on redevelopment, remodeling, uh, intensifying and increasing the density of uh, development and the use of the territory. If we uh, talk about this new agenda, and if we talk about city uh, planning regulation as a tool of economic development, we need to uh, understand the uh, regulation of uh, land use and uh, infrastructure of the agglomeration. And we looked at that indicator. It turned out in half of those uh, 17 agglomerations, I'm not going to name specific uh, cities. I, we have no slides anyway. This capitalization 
has reduced, and the, that's something we expect. If you make uh, housing more affordable, it becomes cheaper in terms of capitalization. You solve your social tasks, but uh, the price of our assets goes down. And let me give you an example. In Moscow, the cost of those assets is 60% uh, of GDP. I'm not sure if you heard that. The cost of housing stock in the Moscow Alliteration is 55 trillion rubles. That's a pretty serious asset for the economy. And as we work with it, we need to be thinking about how we need to assess the potential effect for that cost and uh, how our decisions influence that. To sum up and answering your specific question, how do we need to stimulate the increase of quality of public management in city planning decisions as we have this new agenda? If we really think it's new, first of all, as we change uh, city planning regulation, it has to be done in parallel to changing the tools of uh, housing policy. If we talk about higher quality, more expensive uh, city environment, we need to think about affordable housing for all categories of citizens because uh, an expensive city is not affordable for everyone. That's also a law and we are no exception. We could use the experience that they have in the countries that have already passed or have been going through that for quite a while. They have special requirements for uh, master plans and uh, city planning solutions. And, and for that, we need to provide methodological support on the one hand. Or on the other hand, we need to set up uh, economic and financial stimuli for the cities using these, inst these tools to increase uh, payback uh, from the city assets for the city economy. I need, I mean, budgetary sources of income from land, from real estate, which today are insignificant in terms of their economic impact. And also, they need certain man uh, powers to deal with uh, everyday issues, development of infrastructure, development of uh, housing construction. Uh, so we need uh, more details here so that the cities could uh, take a, a more active part in those processes. Tatiana, thank you. Before we continue, Alexander, I think, uh, had a comment on that. I had just had a question. Would you be able to formulate the main conclusion from your uh, study? One main conclusion from that research. Uh, our main conclusion is uh, we recorded that until now uh, city planning regulation was not the tool to improve the efficiency of using land resources of cities and economic development of cities, and, but rather it was a tool to increase affo affordability, affordability of housing. That uh, goal has been met. If we turn this uh, cube around, upside down, we need new tools. And the main result, now we got quantitative uh, assessment, financial, economic assessment of all these uh, processes. And it's not just on the level of theory, but we can compare all 17 agglomerations. What I was talking about, these are median results, but there's uh, significant uh, differentiation within. That's another uh, major conclusion. Quantitative uh, values. Uh, were mentioned. We have Mr. Yakushev, Minister of Construction and uh, Utilities, uh, presidential decree of uh, May the 7th. Uh, one of the main goals there is building 120 million square meters of housing in 2024. That's a lot of square meters considering the current situation and uh, considering the problems that Tatiana mentioned, considering the lack of uh, projects that uh, Alexander also mentioned. and. As we form our national project, as um, uh, Mr. Reshkin mentioned that as well, so how, or what, what your ministry is focusing on, what kind of solutions are you planning to uh, follow that uh, presidential decree? Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Uh, we have quite an ambitious uh, task ahead of us, and we understand that 120 million square meters of housing by 2024, that's, that's a very ambitious uh, task. And all those who spoke before me, they said 
how today we are at a somewhat different stage of uh, development of cities. We need to be thinking not just how we get our new square meters, how we get affordable housing, but we also finally begin talking about the fact how we need to s s create comfortable environments. It's not just uh, square meters. It has to be comfortable where you feel fine. And then the city is not just uh, where people live, but a city becomes the driver for the development of uh, economy. That's where people use their intellect. That's where people go who want to develop new technologies. And then the city becomes a good point of growth for the economy of entire country of Russia. We have this uh, very difficult task. That's a lot of square a lot of square meters, but we want to build them 120 million square meters, not just some kind of boring gray uh, buildings that we uh, had so many of in the past as we had been performing certain uh, programs in the past. We want to build those 120 million square meters of housing, but we want that those uh, buildings to be good, comfortable. So as you wake up in this new flat, you would feel happy. And we have people of different uh, generations and ages in this room. If we recall uh, 1990s, maybe many just wanted their flat to be comfortable. When I leave my flat in the entrance to the building, it was much worse. We then, later on, we began improving our entrances, our yards around our buildings. And now we are seriously discussing and planning the changes in our urban environment altogether. Well, so far, it's just about some agglomerations, but still, it's a pretty major step forward. Our life's changing. We want to live in more comfortable conditions. We have the right to do that. And that's why it's important for us to find the tools. And we are searching for these tools now as we form our national project, not just to build 120 million of square meters of housing, but also to ensure we have a high quality urban environment. Let me say again, that's a very difficult task. But as I speak from this uh, stage today, I invite all of you, if you have any ideas, the Ministry of Construction is open for your suggestions, for your thoughts, and that's when we are forming our national project that we are going to be using for the next six years. Another uh, point, let me spend another 30 seconds. Uh, ideas and projects are great. And of course, you can implement any idea and make turn it into a good project. But we also have serious regulatory efforts of the government in uh, city planning. And we need to match them and harmonize them. We are at the very beginning of the, our uh, journey. If we look at our regulations in the area of construction, and that's what our ministry is doing now and in the nearest future will be doing quite actively, we uh, know we have our own standards and codes of rules and regulations. Many of them have been uh, outdated. They exist since uh, 1970s. And we won't be able to implement any uh, good design or project if the regulatory framework is uh, lagging behind. That's another task that the ministry should be focusing on in the nearest uh, future. And we are open for your suggestions and thoughts. And we are ready for any ideas. Thank you. Thank you. And to meet those goals that we have, we could always turn to international experience. Our next speaker is Claudio Asioli, Chief of Training and Capacity Development of UN Habitat. Have, you've been working in more than 30 countries of the world. Have you seen any such a structure of uh, housing stock in other countries, like we have here in uh, Russia? And what kind of solutions have your committee offered so that one could uh, well, uh, deal with the 
housing problem in the cities, preserving the historical architecture and the place where you worked. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. In the five minutes that I have, um, I want to bring to you four points, actually four points. First, I will demonstrate that land and its location is a problem as much as is affordability in Russian cities. Second, that urban densities are affecting affordability and accessibility to housing. And third, what is the data telling us about the Russian cities? And I will share with you some of the findings we have. And then the way forward. So if this works, uh, seems not working. OK, so this is the uh, sample of cities, the global sample of cities of which um, uh, we have analyzed the global urbanization. As you can see in the picture, uh, we have randomly selected five Russian cities. And the data I will show you is about these cities. So one of the things we have observed is that population declined is still cities expanded. So in Bereznik and Dzerhinsk, we can see very much that there is an urban extension, but also population decreasing. So we see that the city grew on average two times more than the population growth, which means the city is consuming more land, and this is affecting accessibility and affordability to housing. The population grew in cities and cities expanded. In Moscow, Tiumi, and St. Petersburg, as you can see, the physical expansion of the city was on average two times more in Moscow. So if you fly around like I did for a while because my plane could not land, so I was flying around Moscow, I could easily see what I observed in many other cities and our data is suggesting that cities are growing fragmented where land is cheap, housing is being developed, but it has a cost a cost on affordability and a cost on accessibility. So in the cities, of, and, and what we observe as well in these 200 cities, is the decline systematically of densities. So it's a very costly, unsustainable type of urbanization that we also verify here in Russian cities with very low densities. As you can see in the global average of 900, uh, 90 inhabitants per hectare, which is low, uh, we see Russian cities with 43 and 50 inhabitants per hectare, which is Bosco and St. Petersburg. This has a tremendous impact on the cost and accessibility of housing. So, the conclusions. What do I have? Cities, and this is a position of UN Habitat, we promote cities that are inclusive, sustainable, safe, and resilient. This is one of the sustainable development goals and I see very much, and we're very happy to see that many uh, Russian cities are adopting the sustainable development goals. And we're talking about the new urban agenda that puts housing at the center, which is also something that the government in Russia has put housing as a priority. And so that means that urban planning and management of the territory matters. So how do we do that? It's very important for us to decrease the cost of housing and perhaps have, comp let's say, um, parallel policies that can increase the ability of people to pay for housing. So which means we have to tackle the issue of demand and the supply. Now, housing at the center. Why? Because of location, because of jobs, so we need land. We need land within the urban structure where cities provide amenities, infrastructure, and where there is the bulk of the public investment and not in the periphery. If we continue building the periphery, it will be very costly and unsustainable. So it will have an impact on the quality of life of inhabitants. And you will have more and more cars coming to your cities because housing is located very far. Then we need to tackle the issue of land. Why is it housing going to the periphery? Why do we see the fragmentation? Because this supply of land at scale, service land, is not accompanying the process of urbanization, the growth of cities. So we need to look at who owns land, who actually is supplying land, where is the land that is located and provided for housing building in Russian cities. This is a question we need to answer. And fourth, 
the availability and diversific diversification of housing finance, multiple services, because the population is divided in different socioeconomic groups. And I'm sure you know better than I do that there are people who can afford particular housing and there are people who cannot afford. But if we have provided housing finance, many people that are excluded from the housing market would be able to afford. So we need, we need to look, and housing finance is very conservative. It's conservative in the entire world and it's not different here. So what are the different mechanisms that we can create that all Russian families can access different types of housing finance and improve their quality of life in urban Russia? So, then we talk about affordability, and my colleagues here spoke, finished. Um, so how can we lower the house price to income ratio? We found in these 200 cities that housing is unaffordable in all 200 cities through home ownership, through rental housing, which means people have to pay a lot of their household income to access housing in these 200 cities, and the Russian cities are included. So how can we, in this country, create a policy that can improve the income ability, ability of people to pay, ability for housing finance institutions mm -hmm. to provide finance so builders can build more because people can afford, and we create sustainable cities, so not fragmentation type of urbanization, but more compact, more resilient, more inclusive urbanization. So this is my contribution. Thank you. Спасибо. Очень интересно. It was a very interesting presentation. Uh, we we discuss it later. Uh, so to build compact uh, cities uh, and to increase uh, efficiency of, of uh, resource usage, this is one of the topics uh, which uh, we discuss a lot, uh, also with the um, uh, Institute of Strelka, with um, uh, Muradov, Mr. Muradov, um, uh, who is uh, in charge of these projects. Um, Alexei, what uh, can we do now facing these challenges and goals which we have now? Uh, to make cities um, compact and efficient. Uh, thank you very much, Alexander Albertovich. Uh, hello, dear friends. Uh, just um, a few um, points because uh, I don't have a lot of time. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to remind uh, uh, Tatiana about this. Um, in social constitution, it's also written. That's why we cannot contradict um, uh, these uh, two items, uh, increase efficiency of environment and uh, increase uh, quality of living. These are two tasks uh, which should be tackled uh, together. Secondly, at our forum we know that one of uh, Richard Forry, uh, that, uh, that is one of our well-known, uh, uh, you know, a renowned guests, uh, and he produced uh, the book, which is also well known. And he said uh, that regulation uh, uh, declines efficiency of housing. He said uh, uh, he had an example of Houston, uh, and there is no zoning. And he shows with this example that city regulation does not lead to increase uh, of uh, housing price. And we need uh, also to finish with this uh, myth. Uh, there is literature and also. So um, we can see some information on our site, on our urban forum site. You know, in our modern, uh, modern cities, everything is interconnected. Uh, the social project is called uh, Housing and Comfort City Environment. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, that housing forms um, uh, urban environment and um, then um, uh, some uh, types of housing appear. So we uh, develop standards uh, together with um, uh, DOM uh, RF and we try to show uh, that all solutions in urban environment leads to different consequences. For example, um, you uh, uh, you won't have um, windows um, uh, coming out uh, to some street, uh, uh, so and this street will be um, you know out. Um, of commission because of this. Uh, this so everything is uh, uh, interconnected. Uh, that's why we are producing a very uh, complex document um, and we'll regulate, um, uh, you know, normative base. So with, um, we, we are doing this work now. 
uh, we have our standard, and uh, then uh, uh, to, uh, uh, 12 um, uh, ghosts we have to make relevant uh, and also some pins. Uh, there are some challenges. We have uh, some documents, we have some regulations, also sanitary regulations. Uh, for example, 25 meters, uh, this uh, is uh, uh, so a, a distance um, uh, which should be between parking place and housing. It declines intensity of land use. Then we ask questions to our colleagues. Um, where do we have this uh, distance, 25 meters? And it turns out um, that um, it appeared uh, when uh, uh, our um, uh, grandparents used uh, bad um, vehicles. Uh, there were no new engines, uh, new types of um, petrol. And nobody knows why 25 meters distance. Why not 20 or 23? So no um, grounding for this. No grounding documents for this. And it makes it more difficult uh, to have this process. So then um, uh, I would like to wrap up my brief uh, presentation. Alexander Leonidovich um, and me, the minister mentioned about happiness. And uh, we uh, know also that there is um, uh, economy of happiness, and now um, uh, urban, urbanism of happiness uh, pops up. Uh, some researches are based on big, big date, data, and Charles Montgomery, a very famous publisher, he produced a book, uh, Happy City, and he mention, mentions in this book um, the following. What is uh, uh, the uh, indicator of uh, people's uh, happiness? Uh, it's the time, uh, it's how much time uh, people take for going to work. Uh, so more time he spends in transport, uh, going uh, to work and back, less he's, he's happy. And he feels, uh, you know, not, not so comfortable. Uh, you inhabited guests spoke about this. Uh, uh, so he mentioned that we need compact cities uh, when, uh, where everything is at our disposal. In this case, everybody will be happier, a little bit happier. In Dubai, I think uh, people uh, created the first Ministry of Happiness, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ministry of Construction, uh, Ministry of Happiness, Ministry. So, so also now there is such a ministry. Uh, maybe we'll dedicate, um, you know, uh, our next forum to this uh, ministry of happiness. Okay, we'll ask our organizers uh, uh, to make this topic uh, very important. Our next uh, guest is uh, John Carnivale, uh, of course, um, Italian um, uh, culture and um, Russian culture are very interconnected. Uh, she was the member of the competition which we uh, also um, uh, had um, uh, on charge of the government. Uh, Joan, please tell us about the results of this competition and about main ideas uh, of participants and winners. Well, first of all, it was a very international competition with more than 39 countries that come in all around the world, from India, Brazil, United States, uh, many countries from Europe, like uh, Italy, my country, but also Spain, France, Germany, and even we have uh, Japan. So it was very international, very open, which means to me as a foreigner that Russia opened up uh, their mindset as well to understand and see and to be open to understand which kind of proposal that can come from abroad uh, regarding housing, regarding new technologies, regarding new um, well, maybe standards can be for the next future of uh, the contemporary society with any kind of forms of uh, living with uh, young couple, older couples. So it's something that uh, the concept of the elderly is also come. I mean, it's, it's, it's an issue also here in, uh, in Russia. And uh, I think uh, overall the uh, results was quite interesting because uh, we found different typologies because it was. Uh, divided into three uh, well, main objectives to work with the mid, uh, low rise density, mid rise density, and high rise density. And uh, there was no plot, no, no sites. They have to, the participants have to think about 
the uh, uh, plot, how, how uh, is the urban environment, how is the urban uh, design, and then the typologies of the house. So how the distribution of the house. And well, it's quite challenging because for one side we want to improve the quality of the urban environment, of the city planning, we want to get housing affordable, but at the same time, in order to make it affordable, we need to systemize in order to uh, decrease the cost of construction. And at the same time, we want diversification. So we want so many things at the same time, which sometimes is like uh, asking for, for, you know, for a magic tri uh, trick. So I think, uh, in general, many architects, uh, especially, uh, well, I mean, Russian architects, they understand that they make a double effort to understand um, well the trends that uh, of housing that are happening over overall in uh, well in their countries, but overall the tendencies is in the market uh, worldwide, and to adapt it into the uh, Russian market, which I think uh, is well I mean the Russian market means uh, um, the way of living, the uh, culture that you have of uh, living the houses and the apartments, which for example, quite something quite interesting that came up also with the jury members, was that when you enter in your house, in your apartment here, you must have like a space uh, of uh, filter between the external and the internal part. So with a, a little toilet in which you can wash your hands, you can clean your foot, which is something that is not happening, for example, in Europe. We don't have it, even with the harsh weather. So housing, it's a very important challenge also for Europe. I'm European, so I'm coming from a, a country which they uh, invested between 2014 and 2018 315 billion euro with the strategic European funds uh, between housing and infrastructure uh, and the services. Uh, well, that we don't have a, a, a general uh, standardization of uh, uh, well, um, uh, legislation, so we had to apply for each country uh, for it, uh, so different legislation, so it's not easy to apply all these funds. But of sure, for sure, this is a, a, an very, so one of the most important topics for architects and for countries as well, housing. So I think um, the 20 projects that we selected, uh, the typology that we selected, uh, they can fit the urban environment with different typologies that they are going beyond the blocks that you have here, like with the courtyard inside, but they can create a, a new typology with uh, move movement inside the blocks, creating housing there, but also working with density and creating maybe also a public space inside the blocks, so, so it's like a, a leader community inside the blocks itself. And I think they created, there was also an interest and an effort to understand how you can create a community in each kind of density from low, middle and high rise density in the public spaces of the buildings, of the blocks. So I think, so either can be the entrances, can be the public spaces inside the courtyards, but also in the distribution part, which sometimes it doesn't fit with the systematization of construction because you have to lower down the cost of construction, but at the same time it creates quality. So you have always to find this middle balance that uh, helps maybe to find the right formula. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Joanna. We don't have a lot of time. And before, I would like uh, to give the floor uh, to Mr. Shvalov, uh, the chairman of Vinish Econom Bank. Uh, I would like to come back um, uh, in the past um, uh, when uh, you prepared, uh, you, you were preparing uh, the uh, uh, book uh, for uh, the right to have the World Cup, uh, Football World Cup. Um, I was the part of this team. And um, at some meetings which we had, uh, there was the special section uh, of this uh, book which uh, uh, had the section he heritage. Uh, and then FIFA, when uh, uh, it made the decision to have the, the World Cup here in Russia, uh, you paid attention uh, uh, to development of cities. Uh, how um, uh, can um, Russian cities uh, cope uh, with uh, um, so many tourists and how can we create a new um, regions uh, of housing? And the World Cup was um, very good here and um, also the government um, changed a little bit. Now you work uh, in um, 
Venetian Economic Bank and at the stand of Venetian Economic Bank, um, I saw different approaches um, uh, to study urban economy and the forming of the platform uh, on different uh, parts uh, of urban economy. How um, uh, can this work be uh, conducted? Uh, uh, considering those tasks uh, which uh, were given by the president uh, in his presentation, also um, um, also regarding a connection um, uh, of different um, sites um, in the regions, uh, which can teach uh, teams and um, which can um, uh, develop urban projects by themselves. Dear Sasha, you have so many questions to me that it seems that you had some kind of small presentation. Um, and it's good that you remember that we started um, this project together, um, this project on World Cup. Uh, thank you very much for this. Um, but I can see in our audience there are um, so people with whom we work uh, for many, for a lot, for a lot of years, um, uh, affordable housing uh, uh, for Russian citizens. And this project uh, was launched by the president in 2006. And now, 12 years later, we are forming a new project where, uh, you know, housing of Russia should be affordable. But uh, our previous work. Um, it's also important. Uh, this housing, um, you know, which will be created uh, in Russia, it should be absorbed in urban environment, and it should create urban environment. I have to say, um, not like a compliment, you know, but uh, what I really feel. Uh, so. Um, uh, Sergei Sabianin uh, contributed to this. Uh, he came to Moscow and became a mayor, and he launched this uh, this urban forum. And now we have this uh, brilliant opportunity to meet here regularly. We can discuss development of modern uh, economy, modern uh, uh, contests, uh, and modern competi com competitor competi competitions. Uh, so uh, this um, city. Oh, uh, we discuss what can it give to us uh, and what uh, what uh, uh, can be in the future. Uh, so I would like to thank Mr. Sabanian as the mayor for this, and also professional community gets a lot from this forum. So that's why uh, I would like to thank uh, our mayor, Mr. Sabanian, for this for this forum. And uh, together with this thought, uh, which was always developing within this forum, what will have uh, uh, soon uh, uh, 200 or 600 uh, experts say. Uh, so in Russian Federation, uh, so the, the ministers which are present here, the Ministry of Economic Development, they say that, uh, you know, 1,114 um, cities of the, Russian, of the Russian Federation and only 200, 600 will uh, uh, create um, uh, the biggest part of GDP, uh, so a small part of the cities and uh, the uh, unique properties of, of life. Uh, and uh, the mayor of Moscow now uh, is included in this uh, racing. I know that uh, Mr. Kudrin and Mr. Sabanin yesterday discussed this. Uh, I don't want to uh, be involved into this discussion, but I can say Moscow can't uh, but um, participate uh, in this racing. And it should not only be in this racing, but it should win. And, um, you know, all participants, um, uh, not only Moscow, but other cities should participate. That's why we have these uh, different projects. Uh, and we think uh, there will be about 20 of them, 20, 30. And it will allow us uh, to create uh, uh, not um, only um, you know, smart city in Moscow, but some other cities in Russia. So we have been working with Moscow. And federal government and, Mosco and the government itself uh, created partnerships with Strelka Institute. And uh, Alexander uh, Mamut was my uh, first business partner some time ago. And uh, now um, I look at Strelka Institute, and uh, I see huge, uh, uh, huge talent in these people. And these um, people um, 
uh, do this, um, uh, this uh, are trying to tackle this uh, topic of smart city without practically any support. Strelka is not only an institute which helps Moscow and other cities. Uh, help cities in other countries. Uh, Strelka starts uh, to export its services. Uh, DOMRF, Nish Economic Bank, the fund of um, Mona Cities Development, uh, perceive uh, Strelka as uh, a professional expert. Uh, we don't have so much time. Alexander Leonidovich says also that um, we need to do something once uh, uh, and seven times we should um, measure this um, it's our russian proverb you know but um, life is so quick um, we cannot uh, do everything step by step uh, we should do everything in parallel uh, design well um, create uh, good housing uh, and uh, we need to do this um, at one time uh, so there were some publications um, about this and I can say this right away, and that we are two institutes which have to um, be responsible for urban development uh, and help this development. Vnish Economic Bank um, should help uh, projects, uh, um, you know, on big economy, and the DOMRF uh, should be responsible for modern housing. We want to create partnerships uh, with Strelka, and we don't know what partnership it will be. Maybe um, this partnership um, uh, will be uh, um, the following, maybe contract or maybe some um, equity. Uh, but if you have um, a good uh, partner, and partner is uh, well known uh, to the market, only with such a partner you can win uh, the market. Alexander uh, Leonidovich, uh, uh, we are ready to build this partnership with you, and we can start immediately. And. Um, you know, this big program on agglomeration and on urban development uh, should not be delayed. Uh, we would like to develop it uh, right now. You have uh, all expertise for this uh, professional approaches. We have some other opportunities, and we can combine it. Uh, you know, speaking about Vnish Economic Bank, um, we have um, the fund of um, support uh, and development of Mono Cities. And at the, the previous stage, the situation uh, with Mona Cities was difficult. And then in 2014, um, we had another stage. But always Mona Cities um, were quite weak, uh, about 100 cities among uh, 318 uh, were, uh, were quite weak. And we created a certain program, how to train urban management, how to provide city with necessary knowledge and capital to create job places, how to invite the business, a big business uh, to cooperate, how small business should, be, should feel comfortable in this. And now um, with the Minister of um, uh, Economic Development, uh, we discuss uh, these opportunities we can uh, transform this fund of support and development of mono cities uh, uh, to for the fund of development of modern economy i hope that the ministry of economic development uh, uh, will be in charge of um, uh, the uh, uh, council of this uh, fund and there will be interaction with the government in this way we would like to participate actively in this uh, dynamic um, development and uh, providing this uh, breakthrough development. Mr. President uh, spoke about this during his mission. And uh, this uh, kind of economy will be our main driver and will um, help us to achieve our results. These are our tools. And these uh, people who can do this uh, will do it. Uh, we discuss this with the government now. And we'll use different multiplicator, not only um, loans, um, but uh, some others will um, attract private investments, but not uh, uh, only um, uh, with the government. So, um, and the private investors can also express some initiative, and we will um, support it. We have a lot to do. And the work will be very interesting. When we started, um, 
uh, this to prepare um, uh, for the World Cup. Um, uh, so my my well, the, the main task uh, for me was um, besides um, uh, our legacy uh, to show uh, that um, Russia Russia is different. Russia is a little bit different than it's perceived by foreign countries, and everybody says that millions of people saw that Russia is different, and this myths about Russians um, about uh, our uh, difficult characters. Uh, these are just myths. Um, and if we build our work in the right way um, uh, in 24, 2024, when the political cycle will be over, we will need to demonstrate the um, cutting edge series. Um, maybe we'll be happy together. I don't know whether we'll be able to do this or not. Um, uh, sometimes uh, work is good uh, and wife is beautiful and children is ni are nice, but people are unhappy. But some other people who take one hour, who, who, who take one hour to get to work and have a lot of difficulties, but these people feel happy. So it's important to feel happy, and uh, maybe this is the most important thing. And sometimes after a happy working day. Um, or unhappy working day, you come home. And your home should be like this, uh, that uh, you feel happy in it. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, uh, to say the following, uh, some joke um, about funny apartments. You know, and we um, uh, conducted international um, competition uh, with uh, uh, experts. We wanted to create this opportunity to be happy. Uh, uh, so, and it does, uh, and the size of the apartment uh, is not important. And I said that even you live uh, uh, in a 20 meter uh, apartment, um, you can be happy. Uh, but uh, it's important uh, uh, that uh, each person, each and every person can choose uh, at the market. Alexander Berch and Joanna said about this. So this competition uh, was the following. We try to gather the best knowledge uh, in the world. Uh, people, if you, buy, if you need this apartment 20 meters, uh, buy it and be happy. If you need an apartment 100 meters, buy this and can be happy as well. And competition had such uh, requirements that step uh, should be um, uh, 20 meters, 60 and 80. I know that DOMREF uh, launches a new uh, stage of the competition now, and the apartments will be bigger now. But uh, the, the most important thing for people is uh, that people should have different uh, proposals. Uh, and these different proposals um, uh, can form um, uh, an image of the city, a modern image of the city. And sometimes it does not depend on the size of your apartment. But uh, it's important when you go out from the apartment, uh, because the yard is important, the street is important, uh, and uh, what can you um, get from this? Uh, and as a conclusion, uh, I could talk hours about this uh, topic. Um, I know um, a lot about this. Um, I'm ready. Um, so Vadim, uh, the minister, uh, and those who work in the um, uh, in the government, we have a lot of uh, opportunities in our Venetian Economic Bank, uh, and we can uh, uh, provide a huge uh, breakthrough. Uh, this is a very um, exciting agenda, it, and it can change quality uh, of lifestyle in a short period of time, as it, as it happened in Moscow. And we can do this, um, I think, um, in the country. Thank you very much. Uh, before wrapping up, uh, I would like to say that we're all, all so ready for this partnership and will continue to work, of course, continue to work with Strelka uh, and would like um, uh, to develop this subject. Uh, thank you very much, all participants.